All right, so y'all go ahead and do the factoring and the math knowledge question. Pause the video, and then once everyone is finished, you can unpause the video, and I'll go over the correct answers. So we're going to start by removing the 6. So we're going to have x squared minus 11x minus 12. And then you got to make sure you replace the 6 when you factor. We're going to have 6x minus 12, and then 6x plus 1. This first set will divide by 6, and we'll have x minus 2. And then the second factor is just going to stay as 6x plus 1. And so this would be your answer for the factoring. For the math knowledge question, if you ask about the perimeter, well, you just add up the sides. This is 8, so that side's 8. Since that side on the left is 5, the side on the right is 5. So if you add these up, you're going to get 26. Okay? So we're looking at lesson 84 today. We're dealing with dilations. So hopefully after this lesson you'll understand how dilations work. So a dilation is just a transformation that changes the size of a figure but not its shape. So the shape stays the same, just the size. I don't know if y'all have ever seen Honey, I Shrunk the Kids or any of those type movies where the people got bigger and smaller. Those were dilations. They just changed the size, but they still stayed as the same shape. They still stayed as humans. They were just really big or really small. So I'm going to draw a figure here. So there's my triangle. And then if I... So then if I duplicate it, right now they are congruent. But if I want, I can dilate this triangle, and I can make it a lot bigger. It's still the same triangle. Now it's just a different size. Or I can make it a lot smaller. So these triangles are all the same shape. They're just different sizes. How are these triangles related? Are their side lengths the same? Well, no. This one is much bigger than either of these two. However, all of the angle measurements are still the same. So this angle and this angle and this angle are all congruent. Same thing with these angles. And then same thing with these angles. Okay? So you have similar figures that result due to dilations. The multiplier that's used on each dimension of a figure to change it into the similar figure is called the scale factor. So whatever we use to change each of the sides, that's called the scale factor. And a dilation maps a figure to a similar figure. If you have a dilation that results in an image that's smaller than the pre-image, it's called a reduction or a contraction. So it either reduces it, it contracts it, it makes it smaller. A dilation that results in an image that's larger than the pre-image is called an enlargement or an expansion. So if it gets bigger, it enlarges or it expands. Your dilations always require both a center and a scale factor. You have to know where to center your dilation and you have to know how much you're going to change your shape. The center of dilation is the intersection of lines that connects each point of the image with the corresponding point of the pre-image. So your center of dilation connects each point of your image with the corresponding point of your pre-image. And so we're about to look at an example. Right here, they've drawn a picture. We have our image here, our, I mean our pre-image, X, Y, Z. And then our image, x prime, y prime, z prime, is the blue one. And if you connect each point on the pre-image with the image, and then you connect those with a line and you keep going, and then you do the same thing with y and y prime, and z and z prime, and you connect all of those lines, the c is the center of dilation. So the dilation of x, y, z was centered at point c. So we're going to find the image of a, b. after a dilation with a scale factor of 2 and a center of C. So the first thing that you want to do 
I'm going to use a ruler. You're going to want to use a ruler so that it is going to be um, more accurate. You are going to start by making a line that goes through A and C. Okay, and so I'm going to extend it this direction. And you want to make sure that it's dotted. Okay, so that's the line that goes through A and C. I'm going to move it just a little bit. direction. Okay. And now we're going to do the same thing, except we're going to go through B, C. And so now you're going to connect with the dotted line. Like that. Okay. So that is where A prime is going to be somewhere on this line over here. And then B prime is going to be somewhere over here. Now we know that it's by a scale factor of a 2. It's a dilation of a 2. So this distance here it's going to get doubled basically. So it's about that long. So we're going to go about this much further. And we're going to be about right here. And so that point there is going to be A prime. And you can estimate on these. They don't have to be exact. This distance is going to get doubled. So we're going to be about right here for B prime. And so then if you connect A to B, that would be your new image. And this length is 4, so this new length should be an 8. Okay, so that's how you would do a dilation centered at C. Now we're going to apply a dilation to this triangle using a scale factor of 1 half and a center of C. I'm going to go back to the last example. On this one, it was a scale factor of 2, so it got bigger. It enlarged it. Now on this one, it's a scale factor of a 1 half, so it's going to shrink it. It's going to reduce it or contract it. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to connect each of our vertices with point C. Okay, so you're going to start and you're just going to make dotted lines. And then you're going to do that with L and K. And let's do it again for K. So we're going to connect it and so now we have our three vertices connected to our center and it's going to be about halfway in between so go halfway in between i'm going to say that's about right there for j so that's going to be j prom halfway is about right here for k prom and then for l I'm going to say that L prime is going to go about right there. And so now we just connect our three vertices. And so that's L, J, K. We reduce it to make it L prime, J prime, K prime. Okay. 
looking at the next one. We have a triangle with the vertices. We need to graph the triangle and the image after a dilation centered at the origin with a scale factor of a one half. So the first thing that you need to do is to graph all of your vertices. So there we have A, B, and C. And now we need to connect each of our vertices with the center of dilation, which is at the origin. So now I'm going to do the image in red, and it's half. Well, on a coordinate plane, it's easy to figure out what is half of the distance between the two. What is half of 4, 4? Well, that's just 2, 2. So this is going to be A prime. What is half of the point 6, 4? Well, 3, 2. So we're going to go over 3 and up to 2. And then half of 6, 2 is going to be 3, 1. So we're going to be at this point here. So this would be your new triangle. And if you drew your lines correctly, your points will be on them. As you can tell, my line here is a little bit below, and same thing on this one. Um, but if you're using a ruler like you're supposed to, then it should be exactly on that line. So that's how you would do it on a coordinate plane. All right, let's look at another example. We want to enlarge a map that is 12. inches by 18 inches and we want to enlarge it by 120 percent and it wants to know what will be the lengths of the sides so we have a map it's a 12 by 18 if we enlarge it by 120 percent basically you're just going to multiply 12 times 120 percent and that's going to give you 14.4 and then you're going to do 18 times 120 percent I'm just going to give you 21.6. So those are the lengths of the copy. And then it asks, what is the perimeter of the original to the perimeter of the copy? Well, the perimeter of the original is going to be 12 plus 18 plus 12 plus 18. Which is 60. And then the perimeter of the copy, if you add these sides together, you're going to get 72. And so how do they compare? All you do here is you say 60 over 72, which reduces by 12. And so you can say 5 over 6. And so that's how it compares. The perimeter of the original is 5 compared to the perimeter of the copy, 6, 5 to 6. Okay, so now we're going to look at some practice problems. So y'all try these and then unpause the video and I'll go over how they should look. So we are going to apply dilation using a scale factor of a 3 and a center C. So we're going to start by drawing a line from the center through each vertex. Okay. 
And we're going to do it for S as well. Now at this point, we need to go about three times as long. So this is one, and we need to do that two more times to make it a total of three. So if this is a length of one, and then about two, and then about three, so that's gonna be where Q prime is. For R, this is length of one, and length of two, and length of three. I didn't draw my line quite far enough out, but that'll be R prime. And then S is about this long, so that's one, and then two, and then about right there. And so that we'll say is S prime. And so then you just need to connect each of your vertices together. And so if you connect them, it should look something like that. So that would be about what it would look like. It should be a lot bigger because it's a scale factor of a three. Now for the next one. It says apply dilation using a scale factor of a one half. So the first thing that you're going to do is connect each vertex to your center. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with the computer. So now I've connected them to the center. And now we're going to go about halfway between. So that'll put J prime about right here. That'll put K prime about right here. M prime is going to be halfway. And then L prime we'll put about right there. And then you just connect and so there's my rectangle okay now yours should look a little bit more accurate than that one right there you should have straight lines so if you need to use a ruler then do it um, you don't want to have your lines curving quite like mine do there but there would be my new rectangle okay looking at Part C. Y'all try this one and then unpause the video and I'll show you the correct answer. So you're going to start off by drawing your vertices and connecting your triangle. Okay, so our triangle is here. So now we are going from the center and we are going by a scale factor of three. So if we keep going, your triangle should end up somewhere. It's going to be in the second quadrant for M and then P and N are going to end up in the third quadrant. And so it says scale factor of three. And so on these, you actually don't have to draw the dotted lines. You can just multiply each of your coordinate parts by three. So M prime is going to be negative six, three. I'm actually gonna do it in red so you can see the difference. So this is M prime. N prime is gonna become negative three, negative six. And then P prime is going to become negative 9, negative 6. So it went off of my graph here. And then if you connected each of your image vertices with your pre-image vertices with a straight line, do you see how they go back to your center? And so they should. So I'm drawing my new image, my triangle here. So the red triangle would be your image. Okay, looking at one more practice problem. An architect is drawing plans for a building. The drawing for the front is four feet long by 2.5 feet high. And the drawing is a reduction by a scale factor of 20, one over 20. What are the actual dimensions of the front and how do the areas of the drawing and the building compare? So if it is smaller, we can just say 1 over 20. 
I'll use black so y'all can see it well. 1 over 20. And then 4 is the smaller side because it's the reduction part. What is the actual length? Well, 1L equals 80. So the actual length of the building is 80 feet. Then we can do the same thing. 2.5 over the height. So 1H and then 20 times 2.5 is going to be 50. And so that would be the length and the height. Those are the actual dimensions for the building. Now for the area, we've got a rectangle. So for the drawing, our area is going to be 4 times 2.5, which is 10. And then the building's area is going to be 80 times 50, which is 4,000. And so we just write it as a ratio, 10 over 4,000. But that will reduce by 10, so we can say 1 over 400. So that would be how they compare. Alrighty. So now we're going to look at the scale fact, uh, the challenge question. It gives you a triangle with vertices A, B, C, D, and then E, F, and it's dilated by a scale factor of X. And it wants to know what scale factor P prime, Q prime, R prime must be dilated to make P double prime, Q double prime, R double prime coincide with the original triangle. If you can pause the video and think about it, and then unpause it and I'll tell you the correct answer. All right, so you would dilate the triangle by 1 over x. And the reason you would use 1 over x, you are going to use the reciprocal of the original scale factor. So let's take this triangle here. If we multiplied it by a 2, that's going to make it a lot bigger. And so then to get it back going to this one, we went here to go by 2, so to go back, we're going to have to divide by 2 or multiply by 1 half. So if we went x, then we're going to have to divide by x or multiply by 1 over x. And so your scale factor to go back to your original is just the reciprocal of whatever you did to get to that figure. Okay, so your homework is 1 through 30 on problem set 84. So make sure you do those tonight so we can go over any questions you have tomorrow.